morning. Presuming it is morning in your house, maybe afternoon or evening, but here we are again, all of us together, uh, through the medium of our recordings as opposed to being together in church. I can't tell you, and have no good idea how long the uh, ban on being in our church for services is going to last. Um, I'm hoping that it will not be through Christmas, but I must be honest with you and tell you that I have uh, my doubts, but we will figure out how to do a Christmas service one way or another. So, today is the third Sunday in Advent. At least it's the first time that our parish is all in one place at the same time, uh, even though we are separated by miles of roads and streets and so forth. So, in any event, we will begin our service. Come and save us, O Lord God of hosts. Come and save us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we will be saved. O Lord God of hosts. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Come and save us, O Lord God of hosts. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us, and because we are surely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up from the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For the Lord, I, for the Lord love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give him their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. 
as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll now read the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help of his servant, Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray with, without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Then they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. And then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And as the prophet Isaiah said, Now they have been sent from the Pharisees. Then they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptized with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. And this took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptized. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ with, in, and through. Advent is a time in which we prepare for the coming of the Lord. It is coming to us sacramentally at Christmas. His coming to us individually at the end of our lives. And His coming to us collectively at the end of time. Now, suppose we're told that the Christ for whom we are waiting is already here, in our midst as one of us. What difference would that make? Here's a story of the enormous difference that the awareness of the presence of Christ among us could make in our lives as individuals and as communities. A certain monastery discovered that it was going through a crisis. 
Some of the monks left, no new candidates joined them, and people were no longer coming for prayer and consultation as they went to school. And a few monks who remained were becoming old and depressed and bitter in their relationships with one another. The abbot heard about a holy man, a hermit, living alone deep in the woods, and so decided to consult with him. It took him nearly half a day following the winding paths, often nearly obscured from view by the heavy growth of vines, to reach the hermit's abode. Finally, settled with a mug of hot mulled wine, he told the hermit how the monastery had dwindled and diminished and how it was now a mere shadow of what it once was. Only seven old monks remained, he said. And the hermit told the abbot that he has a secret for him. One of those monks, now living in his monastery, is actually the Messiah. But he's living in such a way that no one can recognize him. With this revelation, the abbot goes back to his monastery, summons a community meeting, and recounts what the holy hermit had told him. The aged monks looked at each other in disbelief, trying to discern who among them could be the Christ. Could it be Brother Mark who prays all the time? But he has his holier-than-thou attitude towards others. Could it be Brother Joseph who is always ready to help? But he always is eating and drinking and cannot fast. Perhaps Brother Jonathan who is always late to matins and laws and seems to daydream all through the services. The abbot reminded them that the Messiah has adopted some bad habits as a way of camouflaging his real identity. And this only made the brothers more confused and they could not make any headway figuring out which of them was the Christ. And at the end of the meeting, each one of the monks knew for sure what they knew was that any of the monks, excepting himself, of course, could be the Christ. From that day, however, the monks began to treat one another with greater respect and humility, knowing that the person to whom they were speaking could be the Christ. They began to show more love for one another. Their common life became more brotherly, and their prayers more fervent. And slowly people began to take notice of the new spirit at the monastery and began coming back for retreats and for spiritual direction. Word began to spread and before you know it, candidates began to show up and the monastery began to grow again in number as the monks grew in zeal and holiness. All this because a man of God drew their attention to the truth that Christ was living in their midst as one of them. In today's Gospel, John the Baptist tries to announce the same powerful message to the Jews of his time, who were anxiously awaiting for the coming of the Messiah. John tells them, Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of this sandwich. The reason the Jews of Jesus' time could not recognize him as the Messiah is that they had definite ideas of how the Messiah was going to come. The Messiah would suddenly descend upon them from heaven in his divine power and majesty and establish his reign by destroying the enemies of Israel. 
no one would know where he came from, humanly speaking, because he was to come from God. And so when finally Jesus came, born of a woman like every other person, they could not recognize him. He was too ordinary, too unimpressive. After 2,000 years, we are now better able to recognize Christ, Christ in the person of the ordinary men and women in our midst together with their unimpressive attitudes, habits, and appearances. Advent is a season for warning. Advent is a season for expectation and longing. Advent is a season for preparation for things to come. It is a time to pay attention to signs. And some Advent signs come from Holy Scripture with words of warning and hope about things to come. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. Each Advent sign points to the one who first came in obscurity of a stable behind an inn in Bethlehem, and to the same one who was now to come in great glory to judge the living and the dead, each Advent sign points to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under a conscious pilot, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant, grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as 
mercy upon you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
these gifts we're about to receive through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who in the first day of the week overcame death and the grave? By his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who ever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. And all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Life is short. and We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.